Welcome everybody. My name is Jonathan Peretta and I have the privilege of interviewing my best friend, Keon Ross. Um, it's a very, very special month, the month of February for Keon. It's his birthday month. And we are here to celebrate someone who has more, worn more hats than any other person in the history of PMD, <laughs> Keon Ross, my best friend. Welcome, Keon. Thanks, John. Johnny, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you feeling today? Uh, it's wonderful. I mean, the sun is shining. You know, we've got one of those beautiful Seattle days. So I'm enjoying myself. Good. So I'm going to jump right into the questions because we have about 13. So let's try to get through them. All right, let's do it. So, so many men in ballet have an interesting story about how they found ballet or how ballet found them. What mm -hmm. was your story? Um, so, I mean, you know, we've been friends for over 20 years now, so you know these stories. Yeah. Um, but, you know. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> So, you know, I started dancing when I was about 10 years old. And the reason that I actually got into it is because one Christmas, my mom and my aunt, they were out shopping in the mall and there was a dance troupe performing, a dance troupe of children. And, you know, I was a very hyperactive child growing up. I loved to sing, loved to dance, was always running around the house. You know, so of course they were looking for things to keep me sort of occupied and to use up some of that energy. Um, and so that... Christmas, they decided to get me a pair of tap shoes and it. 10 tap lessons, you know, just to see if I would like it. They had, they had no idea about dancing. You know, they didn't know if I would like it. It was just something to do. And so I started with these 10 tap classes. And then after that, you know, they were over after 10 and they were like, well, do you want to do more? And I was like, well, yeah, of course, like, let's keep going. I want to learn more. I want to keep doing it. And, um, Eventually, my tap instructor told my mom, pulled it to the side one day and said, you know, Keon is very talented, but his upper body just looks horrible. Like he can't hold it. His arms, you know, have no shape to them. You know, so I think that if we put him in some ballet classes, that might help with his upper body. Right. You know, so we didn't set out, you know, the intention was not for Keon to become a ballet dancer. You know, at this point, they were just thinking that, oh, his tap instructor says that he needs, you know, a, a nicer looking upper bodies and ballet is going to help. So let's put them in there. So then I remember taking my first that well, first my mom said, well, Keon, you know, do you want to take ballet? You know, we don't know anything about it. I mean, do you think that's something you might want to try? And of course I said, yes. You know, I was, I said yes to everything back then. Um, and so I remember everything now too. I do. I say yes to everything now as well. <laughs> um, so I just, I remember, you know, taking that first ballet class and I remember how hard it was. And I was in a, a beginning ballet class with all of these girls, the only boy in the class. I didn't know any, you know, ballet terminology. I didn't know any of the steps. And I just remember struggling so hard. But in that struggle, something in me liked it. I liked that it was hard. I liked that it was challenging. And so, you know, after a while of taking, you know, this beginner ballet class, you know, I started to get more comfortable. And, you know, there came a point where, you know, the ballet instructor was like, I think Keon should actually take ballet, like full time right. ballet. And from that point on, I was sold. You know, I started taking more ballet classes. And what I really loved about it is that the harder you worked, the better you were able to become, you know. And, and that was I mean, that right there was addicting to me. And from yep. that moment on at 12 years old, you know, I was like, yep, ballet's the thing for me. And that's what I did. You you said something that's so true of you. You love a challenge. I, th I think that's completely true of you in all aspects of your life. You love something that's challenging, that's hard for you, and you want to conquer it. You want right. to be the best that you can be at that. So it's that's an amazing quality to have, and you completely have that with everything in your life. It's very cool. Well, you've witnessed a lot of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, we, we met when we were at SAB together, um, 16 and, right? F yeah. 16 and 15? 15, 15, and, and, 15 yeah. and 16, that's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, but at that point, we were not we were not as close yet. No. We were at SAB. You know, we were in the same right. class. We both had Peter Bowl as our teacher. Right. So you joined PNB in 2001. What do you remember most about those early days in the company? Well, when you first said that, the first thing I thought was, oh, my God, <laughs> that was like 20 years ago. Yes. Um, yeah. 
Wow. I know. You know. Where did the time go? Where did the time go? Yeah. God. Um, I. I love, you know, the company was different back then. Yeah. You know, I, I, and I think, I think that that's true of any company. Like as time goes by, the company, you know, tends to shift and change. But I think that when we first started our careers at PMB, you know, I mean, the company was a lot different. I mean, the company, I, all I remember about PMB growing up being 16 at, at SAB and not even thinking that I would ever end up at PMB was that Patricia Barker was at PMB. Mm. And, you know, PMB was a company filled with tall women with gorgeous legs and feet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and that was sort of like the mystique of PMB back then. And, you know, mm. at that point, I never thought that I would end up dancing here. You know, I was, I'm short, I'm not tall, as you know. And so I never thought that I would even be able to partner the women at PMB back then. So... But it was, you know, it was, it was an amazing time. I just, it, it felt like a family, yeah. you know, it, it felt, it felt, the company felt really close back then. Um, it really had that kind of family feel. Like I, I felt like we were connected, you know, even on those days when someone was having a bad day or you weren't talking to somebody, we still all felt, felt very connected yeah. and we all had our eye on, you know, the same goal, which was putting out great performances and and sharing our gift, you know, with right. our audiences, you know, that was what we were all after at the end of the day. And, you know, I just there, I mean, I could, we could talk about this for right. hours, you know, yeah. but I just remember so many watch sitting in the wings, watching so many amazing performances, waiting for my chance, you know, to get an opportunity to share my gift, waiting for my chance to be out in front, you know, and eventually that time came, but yeah, I, I, I was starstruck, I guess you could say yeah. when I first joined PMB back, back in 2001. Yeah. Some of my most favorite memories, um, I, we, you and I talked about this not too long ago too, is of those Nutcracker performances that year that we were in the Paramount together. And just like, we had every show on together and our whole performance, walk to the grocery store to get food, go hang out at the apartment, go back to the theater, go back home. It was exhausting and if I could do that all over again, I would love to have those days back because it was I mean, amazing. It, it, it was, was amazing, Jonathan. And I, you know, I, I feel like what people don't realize is, you know, that, you know, a lot of bonding happens during Nutcracker. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, that was true for our relationship and our friendship as well. You know, we bonded a lot during Nutcracker runs because like you said, we would usually be on every show, you know, at the theater at the same time every night, you know, and so having some having someone to experience that with and go through with, you right. know, you can't help but be joined. I mean, you spend so many hours together and you and I spent so many hours together, even outside, yeah. you know, of work. And so right. we had yeah. Maggie Abercrombie and Fitch jumpsuit thing. It was our track suits. We <laughs> called it our uniform. It was our relaxing uniform. We would come home, put on our track suits and relax and just kind of wind down either between shows or at the, you know, at the end of the night after shows. Yeah. Um, what was it like to transition from a professional division student to the company at P- PNB? How was mm-hmm. that been for you? I mean, so it was hard, you mm-hmm. know, it, w- it was hard. But what I can say is that, you know, I, being a PD, I had made a lot of connections, you know, with people in the company. I mean, I knew you guys from SAB. I mean, a lot of us, a lot of us had known one another for, for a long time. I mean, but even still... I feel like back then, like you guys were very focused on your careers at that point. And I, you know, it's, it's not like you weren't friendly, but it's just like you were focused on something different and we were just getting into the company. Right. So we were at a different place in our careers, you know, and I, I was just talking with Peter about this the other day, actually. I just, I feel like when whoever you join the company with becomes your support system. Right. Because you guys are going through it together. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And so that's, I felt like that eased the transition, but I still felt like there were so many things I didn't learn till much later that I wish I would have known when I was first joining the company. I think it would have made, I think it would have made that transition a little easier. I mean, because in reality, you go from being sort of like the best in your class at the top. And then when you join a company, especially one like PMB, you know, you're sort of at the, at the, you know, you're at the bottom, you're starting all over again. And mentally, that's really challenging. Because now you're not getting all the parts, you're not getting all the attention, the teacher's not looking at you all the time. And, and, you know, and I think that, you know, my group, at least we all had a hard time sort of navigating that, right? You know, Um, 
but we had one another. You know, I joined the company with Lindsay Deck and Leslie Rausch um, and uh, Josh Grant as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we were all sort of part of the same cohort. And I mean, we really we really sort of rallied around one another. And I think that that eased the transition. So we danced together at PNB for 15 years. <laughs> 15 years. Um, do you have any favorite memories besides we talked about um, the, I mean, we have so many memories of us together. Yeah. Um, but do you have any favorite memories um, that I didn't talk about with Nutcracker? I'm going to bring up... Uh, Waiting at the state, uh, waiting at the station, and uh, basically all Twilight ballets were really. I mean, for us, we always that is just. <laughs> I was just about to say that to you. I was going to say just okay. Twilight, 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 Jonathan. Know. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. that is it. I, and at this point in our careers, you know, we had both been in the company for a long time. We had both kind of established ourselves, and you know, we were really sort of like in that stride of, of our careers where we were enjoying ourselves. Yeah. And so having Twyla come in and sort of like make us her quote unquote main men. Uh -huh. it, I mean, like it was amazing. And we did everything together. We did Waiting at the Station together. Yeah. We did Brief Fling together, Nine Sinatra songs. I mean, Opus, you know, yeah, everything. Opus, everything. They were the most fun. I, I mean, because we were in the studio all day together, working with Twyla, cre sometimes creating things from scratch. And I can remember being in the studio with you and Carrie Imler and Rachel Foster and working with Twyla and she's giving us choreography and she does something and does something else and she's going really fast. And then she turns around and she looks back at us and she goes, okay, who has it? And the <laughs> three of us always looked at you and we're like, you better not say you have it because... <laughs> We're going to be in trouble because none of us have it. You were the only one who were, who was ever able to get it like on the first go. No. And we knew that if we let you go first, that Twyla would make that the choreography and no. we would be stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. You know it. Uh, I, I, I have to agree. Those are some of the best memories of our, us dancing together. Just like, and also getting to go on tours together, like Italy and, Again, that dancing so Twyla cool. though, dancing Twyla in Italy. So, remember like, that little town in Italy we went to, Spoleto? Spoleto. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was amazing, actually, performing outside in, in sort of this like little rustic village, and we would go walking through the little village to try to mm -hmm. find lunch, and the places would be closed down in the middle of the day because they like take siestas and naps. Yes. And we're trying to get ready for a show, and we're like, well, "What are yeah. we supposed to eat?" I mean, it was. <laughs> And all that food was so good. It was like, why are you closed down? You have to eat everything before we leave here. It's never going to be the same. Yeah. I know. It was, yeah, that was an amazing tour. And then we, remember we got to go to this party that was at the castle in yeah. Spoleto at the top. Yeah. And the woman, the woman was like a truffle baroness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we all walked into this party and we did not know what to expect. And then people were like decked out and like. Yes. Black they, tie in the yeah. middle of the summer. And I was in <laughs> and they were in gowns. Yeah, it was it was not it was not the most fun moment to look <laughs> at with them. I mean like diamonds and jewels. It was it was lovely that we got invited. Um, but it would have been nice to know what to wear. I mean, but that I mean that is a very cool experience though, to it be invited to a freaking palace yeah. <laughs> in Italy. Yeah. And, you know, I think that dancing does that. I mean, it, it like, you know, being in a company, like you have so many experiences. Yeah. You know, it provides so many experiences that you may not have in your life otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, you know, I'm I, I, I'm really looking forward to when we can start traveling again and, you know, when the company can start traveling again, because I, I feel like that's part of the experience of of being in a company, you know, especially one like PMB, is that, you know, you get to share with our audiences here, but you also get to go out and share out. Yeah. And I think that the, well, I think that the digital season has actually helped us share out more it, than we thought it would. It's true. You That's know? True. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, so, I mean, in this sense, you know, that I think that that was one of the silver linings of the pandemic, you know, when we're talking about our, our company is that we were able to share our art out you know, in, in ways that we didn't think we would be able to because of all the restrictions. Completely. But, you mm -hmm. know, I am looking forward to being able to do it again in person because I, I, I'm i all about energy 
And right. I do feel like that a little bit of something is lost, you yeah. know, when you when you put up when you have this sort of extra barrier between you and the art itself. Right. So completely. Um, so moving on, when did you first develop an interest in choreography? And have you always known that you wanted to choreograph? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, no, I didn't know I always wanted to choreograph. And I'll tell you that I, when I started choreographing, I didn't intend to be a choreographer. Like that <laughs> wasn't my end goal. Like I, I never saw that for myself. I started choreographing in 2005 and, and, you know, it was our next step program, but back then it was called Choreographer Showcase. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I actually started choreographing is because, like I said, when I got into the company with my friends, we, we were young, we were green, we didn't have experience. And so we weren't being chosen, you know, to, to learn new stuff, you know, to learn new works that the company was doing because we had no experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we would, you know, be after class and I would just be having them sort of do things like, show me this. And, you know, we would be working on choreography and I would say, well, instead of doing that, what if we would have done something like this? Like, show me what that would look like. And after a while of doing that, like Lindsay and like Leslie, they were like, you should just choreograph a piece. Like if you sign up for Choreographer Showcase, then we promise we will dance in your piece. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how it all started. Like, they said they would dance. If I put my name on the list, I put my name on the list and that's how it all got started. I made that work. And then the next work I made was, um, the next big work I made was schwa. And that's the one that you were in. You know, you did that pata de, that double pata de with Leslie Roush and Maria Chapman and, and Jordan. And Jordan, yeah. Jordan Pasitti, that's right. Yeah. And Carrie right. and Casey. And right. I think Carell were the uh, trio too in it. Yeah, that ballet had like 20 dancers in it. I used yeah. the I used as many dancers as I could. You know, it was tango inspired. I actually love that ballet. I should bring yeah. it back. I should bring it back out. It did come back. You did it for a choreographer showcase, but then it came back into the PNB rep. It was chosen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So yeah, so we did it. I did it for a choreographer showcase, and then it was actually chosen and presented on the main stage. Yes, which yeah. was a really cool experience. That was the first time that I had actually started working with. Uh, with dancers who weren't yet my close friends. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And also working with dancers who weren't in the core. My right. first piece I ever made was like all core members. It was all people who I knew and who I was close with working. And I just didn't feel comfortable at the very beginning working with more experienced dancers because I, I felt like I didn't have the right, I didn't have the right words to say to them yet. I didn't have the right ideas you know, it almost felt like the ideas that I had at that time were sort of not worthy of where they were in their careers, you know, to kind of, you know, so, but yeah, so Schwa was the first work that I actually, you know, I branched out and I said, I'm going to use principles. So I'm going to use the whole company, you know, all, mm -hmm. all ranks. And it was an amazing experience. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with amazing dancers. Mm -hmm. You can do anything. I just, I just remember feeling in that experience, like my ideas were limitless. I could do anything. Anything I came to the studio with, they could execute on demand. And that was the first kind of real experience I had had with, you know, saying, show me what I'm seeing in my head. I'm seeing this. Now you show me it. And for someone to say, oh yeah, it's this. And Carrie, one of my muses, mm -hmm. I mean, she was the best at it. She could do anything. Any tricky, intricate point work, fast, reversed, she could figure it out. If she could figure it out sometimes even when I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I, I, that's what I love about choreography is the collaboration. I love that. You know, I, I'm not a choreographer who comes in with all of these grand ideas about what I want. What I want to do is I want us to play and I want us to work together. I want to exploit your talent. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to bring out in you what maybe you didn't know you had in there to bring out, you know? And I think that that has been why I always go back to choreography. Like, it's not that I think that um some amazing world renowned choreographer. It's not that I think that about myself. I just think that each time I get to be in the studio with dancers, each time I get to be in the front of the room, encouraging them and inspiring them to be their best selves. That's what that's about. And I think that the piece comes about 
And it happens the way that it does because of that energy, mm -hmm. that energy exchange that you have with your dancers, us working in collaboration towards something together. You know, it's a lot easier to bring people with you when they're in on it versus when you're trying to pull them along to get right. them to do what you want them to do. And, and that is something that I have brought with me, you know, my entire career, you know, with all my, you know, contract negotiating and, you know, working at admin now, it's, it's not, you, you realize that it's not about you, it's about us. It's yeah. about the entire organization. And that does two things. It takes the pressure off of you, but it also puts you in a relationship with your colleagues where it's not like they're working for you. We're all working together. And we're all working together towards the same goal, which is why I love, you know, I've been at PMB for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. I love, I love our family. I love working. I love working with people who get it and who will work as hard as they can to accomplish what our goals at PMB are, which are always to, to share our art with as many people as we can to make it accessible for as many people as we can. I mean, we've been doing lots of work, you know, over these years, you know, audience development, trying to figure out how to make our art more accessible. And when you have a team of people working towards that same vision and that same goal, it's amazing. And that's, that's what I have seen in my two years, sort of transitioning from being in the studio and being on the artist side of it to being an admin. I see behind the veil and I see what the machine is doing and also what the machine is capable of. And I can tell you, it's incredible. That's awesome. That's, that's great. That's, it's, you know, we're here today to celebrate you and to, you know, talk about all of your different positions that you have had at PNB as dancer, as stager, as choreographer, as teacher, as Agna delegate, and now as manage, uh, director of operation, excuse me, director of company operations. So that's why we're here. So it's wonderful to hear all of these behind the veil. Yeah. Stories. Yeah. But you know, I don't, I, I, I have never, you know, it's interesting, you know, about all the hats, you know, I guess I never really thought about them all as individual different things. I just thought about it. Like I'm helping PMB. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like anything I can do to help PMB, to help move our organization forward, to help us continue, you know, to share and, and to be at the forefront of our art form, I want to do it. And if that means I need to teach classes, then I'm going to do that. If that means, you know, I need to inspire younger choreographers and help them develop their voices, I'm going to do that. You know, I mean, I think that when I first, I, and I think that as dancers, we think that the only gift that we have to give is our dance. But I think that over time as an artist, you realize that you're first more capable of things than you thought you were. And second, that you're more complex than just being an artist and sharing your art. There's more you're able to do. And being at a place like PMB and having the opportunity to step into so many roles and to to test myself and to see what I'm capable of. I mean, it, that, that has been, you know, I mean, you, you can't put a, it's priceless. You can't put a value on that. You can't put a value on an organization continually taking chances on you and giving you opportunities to stretch yourself into places where you didn't start from. You know, right. I didn't, I didn't start saying I'm going to be the director of company operations one day. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I didn't know that that's where the path that I was on would lead me. Right. You know, it just so happened that being at PMB, dancing, seeing how things worked, then starting to work with Agma, you know, then starting to teach a little bit, and then the whole while sort of going to school, and then this whole thing coalesced when you know I was able to take the MFA program, the uh, you know the Arts Admin program at Seattle University. Um, and everything sort of coalesced in it. And I was like, I could actually do this as like a job. Right. Now, never did I ever think that this job would be the one that I would have. I didn't think it would be available. Um, but that's when I first started thinking like, there may be something beyond the studio that I could do and still contribute and still feel like I'm contributing to the company and still feel like I'm giving to my art form without actually having to do the art. 
And so that's kind of where I am right now in my career. I mean, you know, this isn't the this isn't the final landing spot, I would say right. for me. Well, that that leads me to a question that I was going to bring up later on. What's next? Yeah. What, your career in this art form is as unique as anybody's. You've done everything from dancing, staging, choreographing, teaching, and now the director of company operations. So is there anything left for you to achieve in this art form? Yeah, you know, I, there's one more thing. And you know, like mm -hmm. I said, you've known me for my whole life. So you know what I'm going to say, Johnny. Mm -hmm. It's, I have aspirations to become an artistic director one day. That's, mm -hmm. that's the place where I'm headed. You know, I, I think, I know that I, I can do good work in this space. You know, I, I, I have ideas and, and visions for what I would like to see a company become and how, how I would like to see dancers cultivated and inspired and, and how careers can be shaped, how audiences can be shaped, um, giving new opportunities to new voices, new choreographers, choreographers of color, women, new stories. I just, there are so many things I think that I can do. And I mean, believe me, you know, Peter and Ellen are doing an amazing job here and they are, they are um, definitely excellent role models for me. The position that I'm in right now is like a front row seat to what it would be like to sit in one of those big chairs. And so I'm actually enjoying where I'm at right now. You know, I'm about two years into this job and I, I'm enjoying where I'm at. I'm getting to kind of see what I could become potentially one day, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to learn the job and to, you know, to hopefully be better prepared than I would have been otherwise. Right. So again, I think this goes back to what we talked about earlier a little bit. I, from even when you were a kid, you love to be challenged. You know what I mean? Like you, you see something, you go for it, you achieve it. You see something, you go for it, you achieve it. It's a common theme in your life and your personality. So I don't think there's anything that you can't conquer, you know? So I think that's amazing. I appreciate that. The world will be better for it. I appreciate um, that. I mean, you know, you, you put your head down and you just work, yeah. you know, and you don't really, I don't think of myself the way that other people think of me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just see myself working. I'm just, I'm just yeah. doing what I need to do to accomplish what needs to happen. And, you know, that's what this month for me is about. You know, like, I know that since we've been younger, I have always gone on and on about my birthday month. But what I didn't realize until sort of much later as I've gotten older is that I give so much of myself to other people throughout the year, throughout my life, you know, throughout your career as, a, as an artist, you give, 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 give. And you have to find opportunities to do good things for yourself. Um, and so the month of February for me is one month where I decide from day one that I'm going to put myself first. Every day that I wake up in the morning, I'm going to put myself first today, knowing that every other day I wake up in any other, other month, I put other people first. I'm always thinking about, you know, my family, my friends, you know, now, you know, the dancers at PMB and, and what they need, you know, it's always give, 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 give. And so for the month of February, I just take that time as a, a battery recharge and I wake up every morning and I put myself first. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes it feels a little selfish, but I know that I can't be my best self for other people if I'm not charged up. Right. It's like our Hawaii trips. I didn't realize the importance, um, you know, Jonathan and I take a trip to Hawaii every summer while we were, we have started a little tradition, but you know, I didn't realize that what that time was, was not only bonding time for us, but it was also time for each of us to kind of recharge yeah. ourselves. I see you as a very giving person as well. And you know how exhausting that can be to continually give, 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 give. And so you need to sometimes put that energy back on yourself and give back to yourself. Right. And so February for me is about that. And you know, that birthday date I love having those parties and get togethers because like I said earlier, I like the energy. Mm -hmm. And I know that on my birthday, my birthday party, I'm going to get to have all the people that I love, all the people who I care about in the same room. And we get to exchange energy. 
And that never happens. We get each other like this one on one or sometimes, you know, three of us or but to have everybody who you really love there in the room with you. Like it's not I wouldn't say that that's about me. I would say that that's also about us and our friends and our friendship and that energy. I think it's a time for us to all come together. I mean, you know, because you know at those parties, we're at those long giant tables and everyone talks to everybody and you're catching up and you're having different kinds of conversations. So yes, I love my birthday, but probably not for the reasons that, you know, people think, you know, it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not a selfish reason. It's more of a, uh, I, I just, I, Self-care and also care about the people who I love. Right. So. Right. Also, so I'm going to look for a good question. But since you're talking about self-care a little bit right now, mm -hmm. um, the pandemic has been hard for so many. So how have you been managing through it? And what have you been doing to take extra good care of yourself? Mm -hmm. So... The, the my silver lining to the pandemic has been that I have really been sort of on this journey um, sort of of self-reflection. Um, I, at the beginning of the, the pandemic last March, which was almost a year ago, if we can believe that, about a year ago, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I was having so many emotions. I was newly into my position. The company was changing rapidly. We were having to try to figure out and plan and change and shift. I was feeling stressed and anxious about that. And then we had the lockdowns and that made me feel stressed and anxious. And so I had to really just kind of pause and take some time for myself and say, some, there are lots of things going on. And if I just pretend that they're not going on and try to like push them down, like I'm going to implode, like, and that's not good. And so I had to figure out a way. And so um, our other good friend, Josh Spell, um, who is now the, the mental health consultant for PMB, mm -hmm. um, PMB school. Um, he actually turned me on to the Oprah and Deepak meditations. Mm -hmm. And at first we did one 30 day meditation together. And then from that point forward, I have meditated this entire year. Every single morning I get up, I do it for 15 minutes on my own. The guided meditation is 30 minutes. That's a little bit long. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I do 15 minutes on my own. And over this year, I have noticed that in the beginning, it was very hard for me to quiet my mind, very hard for me to like, you know, uh, turn those voices in my head down. And now almost a year into this, like I'm very good at when things come up, facing them right away, shining light on them and then putting them down. Um, I have a few more questions I want to get through. Um, how have you seen ballet change over the course of your life? Mm. Mm. And I'll give you the next question too, because you could touch on both at the same time. Yeah. Where have we made progress and what needs to change as we evolve for the future? Mm -hmm. So definitely I can say that there is more representation on stages across America and throughout the world than ever before, um, especially when we started. I also feel like there was a little bit of, there was a little bit of typecasting that happened, you know, still back in the early 2000s when I started dancing, you know, these people are for these roles and these people are for these roles and these people are for these roles. There was still a little bit of that going on everywhere, mm -hmm. you know? I think that over time that has changed. I feel like people aren't put in boxes as much as they were before. I'm seeing lots of black and brown princes and aurora and queens and and prince princesses, you know, across stages and people in lead roles, people out in the front who I who I didn't see as much of when I first started dancing. I was looking for representation when I first joined the company. I was looking for people who looked like me around the country, you know? I mean, there was Albert Evans at New York City Ballet who we loved, loved, you know? Loved. And I mean, that's kind of what, I mean, like he was doing ballet, right? you know? And that's what I wanted to do, you know? And so finding representation was difficult. And now I'm seeing that has changed a lot. There is representation when I look out into the world. I mean, we still have some work to do, but when I look out, I see more representation. Mm -hmm. That has definitely changed. Um, 
I, I think that focusing on the, the newer generations of dancers is something that's going to be important for the future. Um, like making ballet accessible to more diverse communities. I think that that is going to produce the kind of change that we want to see because it's an evolution. It's going to take time. You know, we are having, you know, really strong conversations right now about representation in ballet companies, but that's not going to change in one year. It's not, it's probably not going to change in five years. It's going to take time. And so as we're doing the work now to sort of change shift perspectives and, and get people to understand that ballet is more than just this one thing that everyone thought it was. I think that we also have to focus on up and coming generations and how we diversify at the beginning levels so that not only is it our companies that look like our communities, but it's our schools and it's our schools from the very beginning because those are the students, those are the kids who are gonna come up through the program and then eventually be the dancers in the company. Right. You know, so, you know, I, I think I think it's twofold. I, I I think that we have seen more representation happen over time. And I think that that representation will in turn turn into more diversity in the younger classes because young kids will start to see themselves on stage more. And they'll say, I want to do that. I want to be that person. I want to do this. Right. And then they'll, you know, they'll come to it. It'll be open for them. You know, I feel like I came to the ballet in a very closed time. You know, my, my parents knew, my family knew nothing about ballet. I mean, the fact that I found ballet, I mean, was quite strange to them. They, they had no idea that I would turn tap dance yeah. lessons into a 15 year professional ballet career. Yeah. They had no idea that that would be the outcome when they said, right. do you want to take tap classes in December? I mean, so. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot and, has changed and yeah. we still have a lot more to change as well, yeah. I think. <laughs> yes, completely. Do you miss tap? Well, I did get to tap in Slaughter on 10th Avenue, That's which right. is a ballet that PMB does. Right. I got to tap dance with my other best friend, Josh Spell, when he's That's in the company. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you most looking forward to in the coming year for yourself? Being able to travel. Yeah, you know, I just I, I have we have honestly been in the house in Seattle, you know, this whole time. Right. And so I'm I'm looking and to be for opportunist, sorry, I'm interrupting you. But to, like, let's put it out there. We haven't even gotten together. <laughs> right. We haven't even met in person in right. the Phelps Center every now and then. But that's it. Like, so, yeah, I. I mean, like this, this is our usual get together anyway, you know, this is how we usually connect with one another every week. Right. So, so I, I mean, I, I am looking forward to traveling. That's sort of like my long-term goal, but you know, in terms of like self-care, I'm just, I just want to be able to hug other people. I know. Yeah. You know, and to be able to see you and to be able to go into the studio and be with the dancers and see right. them working and to go into the studio and be with our students. Like I just, I'm looking forward to getting to a place where I can have that energy exchange that I think is so important for me. That's one thing that I'm definitely missing during this time is the energy exchange, you know? Yes. So. And the travel. I'm full on board with the travel. <laughs> Like, Sorry, yeah. that was just the first thing that popped into my mind. We need to get back <laughs> to Maui immediately. Yes, we do. Um, and my last question, well, we could do some more though, but um, where do you hope to see ballet in a year from now? I know we talked it, about it a little bit, but in a year from now, what are your hopes for the ballet world? Well, <laughs> in a year from now, I can honestly say that I hope that we are all performing for live audiences again. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I have to go with, with what's in front of me, like artists, especially dancers, this is not normal for them to not be able to be in front of audiences. And so I, I think that as good of a job as organizations are doing with finding projects for their dancers to work on, it's not the same as them being able to be on that stage and feel what it feels like when the curtain goes up and you feel that rush of cold air from the audience. And then you look out into the black abyss and you know that there are 
thousands of smiling faces and appreciative hearts that love what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't replicate that, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. very few people know what that feeling is like. I mean, I, I know, as I described it to you, I knew, I know you could feel what I'm talking mm-hmm. about, but I think that I, I, I feel that that's missing for our dancers. And I want that for him. My, my heart is breaking that they can't perform for live audiences. And so in a year from now, I hope that we are doing that Yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible, the videos and all the virtual shows that are going on. And thank God for all of that. But for a ballet dancer to be truly fulfilled, they have to perform on a stage in a theater. And not just a ballet dancer, all artists, all all theater artists, you know, it's been very rough on them. And I, I, I truly hope that we can get back into the theater for them all as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's my biggest hope. Yeah. What else would you like to close on this interview before we celebrate <laughs> some champagne? Well, you know, you'd like to I just want to, you know, I just, I talk about you playing tennis. You're a phenomenal tennis player too. Well, right now we are in the middle of the Australian Open and um, I can say that this has been a very uh, trying two weeks <laughs> of my birthday month. Usually it happens a little earlier, um, but this, this it's, it's happening, you know, right now. So, but no, I love tennis. You know, I picked it up after I retired from dancing because you can't go from being an elite athlete and training six hours a day to zero, you know? So I had to find something that was kind of similar. And I mean, tennis was like being in that beginner ballet class again. I started from like 101, like this is a tennis racket and this is a tennis ball. Like we started there and I had so much admiration and respect for my teachers because at that time I was teaching at the PMB school and I was like, I know that me not understanding what you're trying to tell me right now, I recognize how frustrating that is. And I appreciate you going the extra mile like I would for my students to help me understand what it is I'm supposed to do here. So I don't know. That was it was, that was a really interesting time to sort of be a student again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Again. But I love it. And you love to be challenged. So I love it. Just um, roughly how many tennis rackets do you have now? <laughs> I have seven tennis rackets. Only currently. seven. <laughs> so. Currently. Okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask one more question before we finish, but I know what my favorite ballet of yours that you choreographed is. I was wondering if you had a favorite. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know the exact number. How many have you choreographed? Do you know? Oh my goodness. I know. It's a big number because you've lot. choreographed for PNB. You've choreographed all over. So correct. It's 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 more. I can say that it's more than twenty five. Wow. Yeah. All what? in. Any the, any, my, any favorite kids? Any favorite children? Yes, my favorite child is Sam Stravinsky. Mine too. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That ballet was pure kismet. Everything came together just right. I mean, getting to work with Pauline on those gorgeous uh, costumes. Yeah. Gorgeous. I mean, the PMB costume shop is incredible. Getting to work with all of you because at that point our relationships had deepened, mm-hmm. and I knew I knew what kind of dancers you all were. I knew the kind of things that I could give you that you know you could execute perfectly, and it was just it was you know it was a challenge from Peter to create a ballet to Stravinsky music. Mm-hmm. Then he changed his mind and said, oh, well, I'm not going to do the all Stravinsky program. We're going to do something different. So if you want to change your music, you can. But like you've been saying this whole time, you love I it. like a challenge. And so I said, well, I'm not going to change my music. We're going to stick with the Stravinsky. And that's what we did. And you remember being in those rehearsals and us counting that music. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, is it eight, a 12, a 10, a nine, a eight? Yeah. <laughs> but no, that was my favorite one. It's just, yeah. I, I felt like we were... I was doing what I should, I was at the exact place that I should be in my life when I was making that ballet. Mm-hmm. I was doing exactly what I should be doing at that moment. And I think that's why it turned out so great, you know? It's amazing, Key. It's amazing. You're amazing, Key. Everybody, we all love you. We want to celebrate you. Happy birthday month. Congratulations on an amazing achievement, lifetime achievement 
of all your accolades, awards, and titles, and <laughs> you are only going to continue to collect for the rest. Oops, my phone. Sorry. You, <laughs> you are only going to continue to go up, baby. So congratulations. We love you. Any last words to finish out with? Well, I just want to thank all of you for making me feel so special during my birthday month. And I love all of you. 